Uh, do you not need to do? Do you not do the intro thing and all that shit? What intro thing? Oh, you mean this? Mysterious settings, unforeseen shepins. What are you telling me, bro? <laughs> I'm good, man. That's a nice Welcome little back. manager. Nice, isn't it? So today, lad, we're moving world. around. Preston, Manchester, we, London. We need to get we need to get in sync, lad. Us. No wonder there's a fucking delay, lad. Never mind the time difference. Um, yeah, bro. We about. I'm about somewhere taking bites out of apples and all that, bro. Welcome back to the What Does Your Mum Think podcast, everyone. It's been a minute, but we're fresh. We are here. We've had things cooking. Um, and yeah, lad, you sound good. Is that a new oh, mic? Sound, cr- sound crispy, lad. Going up in the world. <laughs> But yeah, we back consistently, consistent at being inconsistent. Um, <laughs> but we're trying to find a rhythm, aren't we, bro? Absolutely. Podcasting. So yeah, fresh What's out. Going on? Just trying to warm myself up a bit, warming up the cockles and that. Um, yeah, welcome back, everyone. What's going on? I know you've missed us live in the flesh. What has been going on, Michael? Um, Took a little trip overseas. Where are you in the world? Overseas. Man's an NY sizzle. All right. <laughs> New York City, baby. I had a sick day today, so obviously I've been here a couple of weeks now. Um, and I've been like, <clears throat> I've been mainly based around that Lower East Side. But I just moved to Brooklyn. So started like proper checking Brooklyn out a little bit. Um and yesterday I did like a biggie tour for myself. Do you know what I mean? Like I I did all the research and whatever. I knew I was near by Clinton Hill. Um, I knew I knew he's near Cl- Clinton Hill. Obviously, he's from Bed Stuy, Bed Bedford Stuyvesant. Um, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to do all the research, figure out where he's from, where, where the juicy video was shot, <laughs> all these kind of stuff. You know, and, nice. and walk down Fulton Ave. Um, so yeah, dude, it was cool. I should have sent you some photos so we could have pulled them up because I juxtaposed it. But it's exactly the same as it was him. So on his street where he's from, so a couple of doors down is where he shot Juicy. Um, I'm guessing he did it like that so he didn't bait his house up. But then right across the road is where he learned how to freestyle. You walk on the corner of like Fulton and St. James. Um, and that's where he's like shooting dice and shotting, shotting crack <laughs> <laughs> and all that shit. Um, and there's like, oh, like murals around it dude it's crazy like when you walk down it and you get to the spot it says he's got like a little sign that says uh christopher wallace notorious big like on, on his on his corner stoop kind of thing he's stoop, <laughs> the stoop. Um, I, seen the, I seen the mural you posted on instagram but yeah man send me some pictures now i'll pull it up on here yeah dude it's amazing bro like fucking i i got back and i juxtaposed them all so i was looking for um like the classic photo where he stood with his boys building a joint uh that's one next to his gaff do you know what i mean and his gas there uh like i said we're, we're throwing dice that's outside the face it was a liquor store but it's a pharmacy now um but a lot of it even though obviously it's like you walk in and it's on this big build, building and it's in, in ma- massive typography spread love it's the brooklyn way shit like that it's kind of cool it's like, i feel like that's i'm nerding it. out a bit but it is really cool no, you know no, what i mean it, it, no, that's it feels a certain way I did something pretty similar actually in London a few years ago, but I did the Harry Potter tour, so it's not quite as G. <laughs> <laughs> but I found all the spots and I went to the wall. Um, but yeah, it's kind of cool. It's weird. I think something like I used to listen to. Well, obviously, still do, but like I used to listen to uh, that juicy video, uh, like on Channel AK, Channel U back in the day, and they stood there. <laughs> And you've been watching it, and there's not when I stood outside of it yesterday. I'm stood on the step where he stood, you know, and yeah, it's yeah, kind of yeah. like, whoa, it's a bit mad for someone who's it's the same thing, yeah. But so, yeah, man, so I've been wandering around the city. Um, I was working my way over to the Brooklyn Museum on Prospect Park, which I keep telling me is the park. I want to be near Prospect Park. I think I see it as similar as that Victoria Park in London. Um, I've not been there yet, but it's supposedly similar to that, but it's bad when it rains here bro <laughs> i know it's eight rains in the uk but when it rains it just whatever the weather is it's consistently that weather like they go ham on that weather you know what i mean so it's like if it's uh-huh. raining it's raining bro if it's snowing it's snowing if it's windy it's windy if it's fucking hot it's hot you know um 
but I've had a lovely morning this morning, gone up to the like rooftop, done some yoga. Uh, it's a nice day today, so I'm gonna have a wander around again. And um, the, all the new visuals are it's, it's it's sick to be taking in loads of new and all the new packaging. Like right? yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> when I'm walking through like Whole Foods and stuff here. It's like walking through um, Gretel's Design Studio, <laughs> or like you know, I mean, you see all these brands that you see on like Pinterest and things like that and whatnot, and. All these bits yeah, but of it's just like a Pinterest board come to life. Yeah, but all the cool shit that you see and you collate on your Pinterest boards that you never actually see in person, but then all them kind of things that you see in person. Um, it takes yeah, me so... Yeah, shots. We were talking about this last time, weren't we? Yeah. Snack shots. Yeah, yeah, we need to pull her on. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good. Um, I think Jim's sat here waiting, you know. I think we could pull Jim on. Yeah, Jim. great. So before we pull the guys in, we've got a good one for you today. So again, we're back fresh. Um... With two people today. This is the first time we've done one with two people on, right? Yeah, correct. So and this is good Damien. actually, because just what you sorry, like just what you were talking about then is all right. You can, is, you can introduce him. <laughs> you can introduce you go you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um it's so music related, just you just talking about walking down the streets of New York and doing that biggie tour. Um, you know, I think Today's podcast is actually quite relevant to what you've just been talking about. I mean, obviously, you said it, it like, is actually. Come on. See what I did? Podcasting, <laughs> bro. 101. Do you know what I mean? Music. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So, we've got the founder of Supple Studio on today, Jamie. It, how did you pronounce his last name? I'm going to butcher it now. I feel bad. <laughs> I don't know. Jim sat here waiting. I feel like we should ask Jim <laughs> before I butcher it. Hello, Jim. Hello. How are we doing, Jim? Good, thanks. Good, thanks. It's uh, hello. 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 Right, great. I'm just going to do a little bit of an introduction. Hello. And then um, we'll chop all this bit out. <laughs> Hello, Jamie. Yeah, How you me. doing? You all right? How's it going? <laughs> What's going How on? How are you doing, guys? Just, just absolutely butchering your last name. I'm so sorry. Oh, don't worry, mate. I'm used to it. If I'm, uh, if I'm in a doctor's waiting room and someone comes out and goes, Mr. Uh, and I go, yes, yeah, me. <laughs> okay. Michael, I, I can't see you when you're in the waiting room, but Jim, Michael's like, Jim's in the waiting room, he'll be able to help us say it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> he failed to prepare, prepare to fail and all that. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it's all good. Um, um, but yeah. So is, this, is this podcast videoed or is it just audio? No, nah, with video, video yes. Audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, we weren't sure. We just had a chat before we came on. So, uh, cool. Yeah, they'll be both, and then it'll go on to YouTube and Spotify with both video too, and obviously audio. Cool. Um, so yeah, awesome. so thank you very much. We um we just used to shoot straight into it. We'll do a little bit of editing on that front bit though. We're like we're mashing things up, but I'll do a proper introduction yeah, now, and we'll cool. get to going. <laughs> Today we have Jamie Alul, who's the founder and creative director of Supple Studio. Jamie, sorry if I'm pronouncing your last name wrong. Um, Jamie's got a History of working at Hattrick, Blaster Magpie, and he's done some killer projects with awesome little lovely smile on the mind ideas in. And it was hard on this one today, and it Michael to not delve into supple <laughs> and break down all these all the projects that he'd done. But today was the focus on the book. But he's collected pencils along the way, many pencils along the way for his for his projects that, that, that they've done. And we've got Jim on, who's the copywriter, editor. A strategist at Total Content. Um, he has a background in journalism, advertising, and writing books for many big brands and many big faces within the creative industry. And he's also been awarded pencils for his work in the colors of grey and black. So without further ado, let's get into things. See, so today we're speaking about um, Logo River. So actually talking about a project. Usually we have a person on, we talk about that person and that person's journey. So before we actually go straight into the book and delve straight into the book, it'd be great to take it back to the beginning for both of you jamie and jim um and what was the the kind of catalyst for getting to where you got to now and what introduced you to design and copywriting do you want to go first jim uh yeah sure 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 um i was wanting to write um from about 10 i wrote long stories and stuff and yeah i went to i did english at university couldn't get a job, went to London College of Printing where I did a sort of publishing and journalism course and got into a big publishing company, Haymarket Publishing. I worked on all kinds of strange magazines for doctors and accountants and engineers and everything. But they did have one cool magazine called Direction, which um, specialised in graphic design and uh, advertising creativity. And that was kind of 
uh, where I can't wait to, I mean, I mean, I did a bit, did a bit of typography and um, design at LTP. But this magazine was where I kind of started meeting a lot of designers and interviewing sort of interesting people from the visual arts. You know, uh, I interviewed Annie Len, uh, not Annie Lennox, Annie Leibovitz, and Malcolm McLaren, and loads and loads of people. I got to meet some really fantastic creative types, and that kind of inspired me to do more of that and I kind of went freelance and um, as you um, said in my little bio that you read out I've, I've written on most of the design publications that no longer exist and uh, yeah did three years at the Guardian and um, yeah so that that's how I got into it then I started writing for brands I met Jamie through writing for brands um, when he was at uh, was it Hattrick and then, yeah, and then yeah. Blast, yeah. And yeah, we just carried on working together, not only on professional projects, but on personal projects as well. And Band Logo Jukebox was um, our blog on Band Logos that was the precursor to uh, Logo Rhythm. Um, and then Logo Rhythm kind of spun out of that. So that's kind of how we got to where, or how I got to where we are now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, my no, journey right. was um, kind of, yeah, a bit circuitous. So I I studied graphic design at A-level, but um, it was in the kind of mid-90s when, you know, well, I don't know what graphic design at A-level is like now for, in schools, but back then it was kind of orthographic drawing, drawing torches and product design and stuff like that. And um, I really wasn't into it and um, just kind of thought, oh, if this is graphic design, then I, I don't want to do it. So I didn't go to university straight off. I um I kind of like left school at 18 and I actually went on the dole. I kind of went down to the dole office and um, I, at that point I kind of just joined a band and I was kind of like, it was the mid nineties, Oasis were massive. Oasis were telling everyone in their interviews how they went on the dole and how being on the dole allowed them to be musicians and all this stuff. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to do that. And uh, within two weeks of going on the dole, I actually got a job um, a software company company as a marketing assistant and they saw that I had a graphic design a level and they were like oh we need someone to design our kind of like powerpoints and stuff like that so I basically got this job at the software company and uh, and yeah started sort of learning how to this is like early days of the web so I started to learn how to code a little bit there and sort of like a early kind of Photoshop kind of thing. I was designing like icons for their software, like in like 16 bit and eight and 32 bit kind of mm -hmm. uh, icons and things like that. And I sort of just, I guess I started to learn how to design on a computer a bit there. And at the same time, I was playing in a band and we'd kind of made our first uh, single and I was kind of making the CD covers for that and doing the posters and things like that. Um, and so I sort of started to think, oh, maybe, you know, maybe there's actually graphic design that isn't drawing torches mm. and uh and then yeah then i basically sort of got fed up of working at the software company i've been there about three years and um obviously hadn't made it in the band i was in and i thought i better start thinking about getting a proper day job and uh i went and signed up for a, a graphic design course at um, somerset college which is the college near where i lived like 20 20 miles up the road and um and yeah got on that course and then through that i actually met um one of the tutors that was like a part-time tutor her husband was a musician and his album covers were designed by rob o'connor at stylo rouge um, and she managed to get me a work placement at stylo rouge when i was still just doing this kind of national diploma in graphics and um it's kind of weird because rob knows uh jim and rob's ended up helping us loads with the blog and the book and he's in the book loads and he's put us in touch with loads of designers and stuff like that so it kind of like this book really kind of goes right back to them when i was like 21 mm -hmm. 22. um anyway then fast forward i kind of got really into design thought i was gonna kind of just design album covers and things but then i kind of signed up for the hnd uh, degree at somerset college and then I got taught by this guy, Malcolm Swatridge, who um, was one of the founders of the Partners now. Well, they've changed their name so much. I don't know what they're called anymore. They were Super Union for a while. They're now maybe Design Bridge and Partners, I think. Um, and he just taught us 
about smile in the mind and ideas and and it just totally changed my my kind of course you know i was thinking oh, i'm just going to do like album covers and cool shit like that and sort of through this kind of smile in the mind kind of training of kind of ideas graphics i kind of realized there was more to design than just that and actually mm -hmm. like the kind of you know the thought process behind it as well as what it kind of looks like at the end was like really key and um and that just sent me on a, a totally different path so i um i did a bunch of placements in my and at the end of that summer i got a job at a company called hatchery design who just started out uh there was just the three guys um that set up and they'd only been going about three months and i went in for like a one week work placement and i stayed there for five years nice. and that was where i met jim <laughs> um, i met jim there and then i went to another agency called blast um and yeah. i was there for 18 months two years and also worked with jim there then i set up an agency with two buddies from art college uh called magpie studio and um i did that for five years and we had quite a kind of like big trajectory you know we got really really kind of um you know on paper quite successful quite quickly you know had some amazing yeah. clients by the time i left like apple and samsung and nike and channel mm -hmm. four um and then yeah and then i kind of just sort of had this moment where i'd sort of life had changed had two kids um flat in london was kind of shrinking around us just full of more plastic tap that kids need and then just decided to leave london and leave magpie and, and move back to the west country where i'd kind of grown up in my sort of formative years and um and it was actually when i set up supple i wasn't allowed to share any work and i thought i need to put up some kind of website and uh, jim helped me basically create a website that had no work on it but still managed to get me work <laughs> just by with some amazing <laughs> words um and i still use a lot of those words today on our website and, and stuff like jim was you know really kind of crucial to setting up supple and and you know and also because i'd kind of gone from having partners and other creative directors and the team and then it was just me i kind of used jim as my other you know kind of creative director really for, particularly for that first sort of year or two where it was just me before i kind of built a team and we just did loads of projects together mm. um and that's really how we sort of ended up having such a close relationship really was jim behind small agency thinking tm no that was jim <laughs> uh, no <laughs> that was me actually yeah yeah <laughs> um yeah on, on that on that jamie yeah i think me and christian i mean we could definitely talk to you about your past yeah. and we could talk to you about smile the mind ideas probably for well for des and um, but to make sure yeah, that we're yeah. keeping things on track <laughs> um what music were you both into as you were growing up and also i know you mentioned about being in a, a band what um yes yeah, so, so what music did you play as well yeah so i mean in the 90s it was kind of like it was that moment where guitar bands kind of kicked off again after stone moses and the sort of Manchester stuff um before that i was kind of even as a teenager kind of quite into techno and rave and growing up in the west country there was quite a lot of free parties and things so i had an older cousin who used to drive me around to all these kind of free parties in in fields and forests and stuff around somerset um so i kind of like was into that and then i i had the stone roses album and i just remember it just being like because it was like <laughs> guitar but it was dancey and it was like and it just that was like the moment where i was just like i need to get myself an instrument and you know um and then yeah just and then i kind of got into oasis and and um like Paul Weller and that kind of stuff. And actually through Paul Weller sort of discovered older music, you know, kind of realized that all that stuff I was listening to that I thought was new had already been done. You know, and I kind of, I'm pretty lucky. Like my parents had quite a big record collection. So my dad had loads of Jimi Hendrix stuff, like really obscure shit and loads of like who records and um, mm -hmm. basically like a lot of kind of sixties and seventies rock. And then my mum was really, really into soul and ska music and reggae and stuff like that so i had these like two kind of collections that i used to kind of dip into and um yeah so like i've always had quite a kind of retro kind of leaning you know the music that i make now i kind of you know we try and make it sound like it's 1968 i feel like that was like peak music for me <laughs> i was bored at the wrong time 
<laughs> how, about, how about yourself, Jim? Yeah, well, I'm a bit older than Jamie. I was sort of uh, really into sort of post-punk stuff. I mean, I saw the Ramones. I'm actually one of the people who wears a T-shirt who's actually seen them. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, all that stuff, I mean... I was I went to Exeter University and at the time it was um had the biggest um hall concert hall in the southwest so we got and the university circuit was still going then and we got you know Elvis Costello in jury uh clash um yeah all, all those kind of post-punk uh bands who I absolutely loved and then a bit later on I met this American guy who's designer friend of mine who's very influential on, on me in lots of ways a guy called Norman Hathaway and he introduced me to soul uh, which is my real passion now particularly 70s soul um Marvin Gaye Aretha Franklin Al Green I absolutely adore um all that kind of stuff um so yeah that that's it's, it's kind of odd mix of sort of post-punk um and then you know some newer stuff but it's, it's mainly that sort of 70s 80s stuff yeah. yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. So then <clears throat> what driven you to start the blog originally? And how long ago did you start the blog? Um, it was in 2017 we started it. Um, so it's been an idea that's been uh, swilling around in the back of my mind for ages. Because when I was a, a design journalist and I was interviewing people about how they got into graphics, I, you know, I'd, I'd ask them, you know, what was it that kind of turned you on? And so many of them, particularly blokes, I have to say, um, said, I started by writing, uh, sorry, drawing uh, band logos on my exercise book or my satchel. Uh -huh. And some of, them said, uh, some of them said football crests as well. So that was another thing, but I wasn't interested in writing a book about that. Um, so, so, yeah, it'd been there in the back of my head. And, you know, I'd got to one of these sort of phases where I was getting a bit fed up with work. And I just thought, well, what would I really, really like to do? What would really turn me on? And I thought, well, something that somehow mixes graphics and music. And there have been so many books about, you know, album cover, sleeve art and all the rest of it, most of which I seem to have. Um, and I thought, well, how can I do this sort of slightly differently? What, what's a, a, a good angle on this? And then, you know, it just came into my head, band logos. And so I immediately mm -hmm. got to Jamie and said, look, how about us starting a blog um, about band logos? And then maybe one day we'll have enough material and turn it into a book or something. Um, and he said, yeah, yeah, let's go for it. Um, so, yeah, that's how it all started. The, is yeah, the blog pretty... still live? We, 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 we did try and get onto it, but it's passworded up, isn't it? Yeah, there's a bit yeah. of behind that. I don't know if you want to uh, take it on. Jamie. Yeah, we basically, um, when we got the book deal, we were like, oh, you know, this is like, you know, not probably like a third of the content of the book is is on that blog. And <clears throat> so it felt like, you know, yeah. he's going to want to buy the book if if they can just read most of yeah, it on yeah. there. Um, so we kind of just, we just put it to bed for a bit. We'll probably bring it back to life once the book's out, to be honest. There was, uh, also wow, that that guy, there was that guy, the pin badge guy. Oh, yeah, there was the pin badge guy. I forgot about him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was some guy that basically was sort of, saying he was going to use all our content on another sort of thing wasn't it and uh yeah it just seemed like he was going to steal everything <laughs> so we quickly yeah. password protected <laughs> it sure. it's kind of a bit, bit of a really weird email to get. Just set up a new business selling pin badges and oddly <laughs> most of them are the pin badges that you've uh, already written about so it'd be great if i could just use all of your content <laughs> sell my pin badges <laughs> so, um, Jesus yeah. Christ. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, then we uh, yeah, I forgot about that, though. Yeah. <laughs> so how long in total has it so uh, has it took how long have you been working on it in total? How long's seven it been years. how long has the process seven years the process, yeah. Wow, that's because amazing. Because it's, it's all been in, in our spare time, weekends, you know, evenings, and you know, Jamie's yeah, yeah. got two bands, young family, all the rest of it. <laughs> so yeah, I mean we I kind of naively thought when we started the blog we'd do like a couple of weeks or something but it, it ended up being yeah, like yeah. once a month if that so it, yeah it took a lot longer yeah. than we thought wow that's amazing so it's we also got... on it, so please sorry i was just gonna say we we also sort of had maybe about halfway into that we um you know when we sort of had enough content to sort of think oh this could be a book we uh the time that Supple and kind of did some sort of 
you know dummy spreads and things and came up with a cover idea and things like that and um we pitched it to a few publishers and at that time uh, we were working with thames and hudson as a as a client so i sort of had an in with one of the editors there and shared the, the book designs with uh, with them and actually they sort of bit at first and they you know they were interested and then we sort of had some back and forth with them and um basically they wanted to sort of dumb it down a little bit um you know if they wanted it to be like 100 best band logos ever kind of thing less kind of in-depth and you know more just like a logo mm -hmm. on every spread and not as much kind of deep kind of uh, research as we wanted to do um anyway we kind of redid the the kind of layouts to fit what they wanted and it kind of went on and on for a few months and then it got to a certain level where it went to some kind of editorial board meeting where they decide which books they're going to kind of move forward mm. with and they they basically ditched us but um so we kind of went away and licked our wounds for a bit i think there was a, a year or so where we were like Ugh. and then um i think when we sort of like got the energy back on it we you know i kind of redesigned the layouts and kind of you know just kind of put a bit more into them and then we sent out the the kind of pitch proposal again and um and that's when jim had sort of heard about circa press through andy altman from why not associates because he'd done a book with them and jim sent it to them and that's how we kind of ended up where we are basically and that was probably two years ago jim maybe yeah a yeah, less. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah do you know tat andy's book it's a sort of collection of graphic ephemera it's really good if you haven't yeah. seen it yeah, yeah. Should check it out. yeah. <laughs> anyway so what's, it collected. What's, it, what's it called again sorry what was the name again tat t-a-t <laughs> It's basically just all this graphic crap that he's been collecting since he was um, 16, I think. And he wanted to just call it Andy's shit at one point. Um, oh, yes. so, <laughs> nice. but, but it's really cool the way he's put it all together. It looks, it looks beautiful. And um, yeah, the great thing about David at Circa is that he's just completely left us alone. In fact, he's even pushed us to kind of go further and I'll kind of make it even more creative and out there. Whereas everybody yeah. else pull us back so that's been really great from that point of view yeah we had another publisher who wanted to do the whole book in black and white and we were like come on it's like <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah listen guys before so, we get too deep into it i want to pull up the video if that's cool just so all the viewers mm -hmm. and listeners can um yeah sort of see what's going on then we can get into the crux of it yeah, yeah, definitely. And on the back end of that, before you do, Michael, I'll just read out the little segment. So, Logo Rhythm is a lavish 440-page book celebrating the overlooked art of band logos 1960 to now. Discover the intriguing and often untold stories behind more than 90 of the most iconic and interesting music marquees ever created. And I love the quote that you... I can't remember where I was reading it, but I love the quote um, where it says, uh, album covers get all the praise, but the humble band logo... Mm -hmm. Has never quite got its full dues until now, and especially nerding out as graphic designers, right? Like <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah, and, um, so yeah, play the video, Michael, and then we'll start getting into it a little bit more specifically. I bet you watch this sometimes, aren't you? How many times you watch through this? Yeah, nice. It's so cool. 
It's great. So it's been backed, right? Well and above. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We hit our uh, target in basically three days, which is Wow, mind-blowing. that's amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I got up on the Tuesday um, and kind of like hit the the button that said publish on Kickstarter and I was bricking it. <laughs> you know, you just like, like, you know, you just don't know, do you, with these things, whether they're going to catch on, whether yeah, it's yeah. going to kind uh-huh. of resonate with people. And, you know, you, you've heard how long we've spent on it. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd taken November off work because I just wasn't getting the time to really sort of run at it. And I took November off work yeah. last year and just did a month, literally just shut in here in this little home studio on the side of my house. And uh, Jim and I were, you know, catching up every day and just sort of smashing through the content. And um, yeah, yeah. And then just yeah, hitting that publish button was really nerve wracking. But yeah, it just kind of started really rocketing through the day as we started shouting about it and um and then we thought oh maybe that's just day one then it's going to drop off a cliff and then it just carried on <laughs> it's crazy you know we're phoning each other every night and text each other just like oh, bloody hell, it's just hit this, you know it's, it's hit this many k it's hit that many k oh, oh amazing messaging me constantly you know it's like it was it was wild and yeah now we're we're about to hit 25k which is 10k over our funding target now is it not even more that's- than that Maybe I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> I was I was seeing it in dollars. Oh, I'm mean, I'm seeing it in dollars. You're right. It's yeah, thirty yeah, yeah. one thousand dollars on my end. <laughs> dollars, Jesus Christ! Maybe we should talk about it in dollars from now on. <laughs> oh well, listen. Congratulations. That's absolutely amazing. And obviously, music's yeah, always fine. played a like vital part in both of your lives. From being, do you know what I mean? Back in the day and stuff like that, and to be able to make. Um, a curation project out of that for the love of it and the love of graphic design as well them two passions coming together and coexisting together I think it's amazing um, so so when you were sourcing everything and you was reaching out to everyone and stuff like that what was that process like because I love all the sketchy bits and obviously I want to get into my favourite logos as well the weirder ones the better yeah, ones I always yeah, yeah. find but um, but yeah some of the pages have like sketches and stuff so how did you find the digging and did some people tell you to f off a little bit or were some people always like hey, yeah this is the behind the scenes kind of thing um i was quite lucky in that from being a design journalist i had a pretty good black book as yeah. well and I, I knew a lot of people and a lot of people i hadn't been in touch with for maybe i don't know 20 years i just got in touch with them there's this guy um matt cooper who um, does uh, Arctic Monkeys and uh, Franz Ferdinand designs all their cupboards and stuff. He works mainly for this Domino Records. Mm. And uh, I'd interviewed him when he was just graduating as an illustration student from Harrow, Harrow College of Art. And I wrote the first ever article on him and it, it really launched his career. So when I got in touch with him 20 years ago, he went, yeah, of course I remember you. and. Um, you know, so people were really keen and we, we kind of um, found if you don't, you know, if you don't ask, you don't get. And mm-hmm. most people would say yes. Most people would be more mm-hmm. than happy to kind of go back. And you know, I remember this guy, Jeff Halpin, who did the um, the UFO logo. Um, I'd, I'd met him at some lunch ages ago and I sort of got in touch with him and say, oh, you know, we had a chat, you know, five years ago or something. And he said, yeah, 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 I'll, I'll talk to you about the UFO logo. And then halfway through the chat, he said, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. And he ran off and I was just holding the phone, you know, silent. He comes back five minutes later. Goes, I've just been up the attic. I've got the original artwork. And it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that stuff is just pure gold. But that was happening yeah. time and time again. So, uh, yeah, it was great. I think Rob O'Connor yeah. as well has been quite, quite key to it, hasn't he, Jim? Like, mm-hmm. just, you know he sort of always knows who to speak to about, you know, if we get stuck in a rut of like, we can't find out who designed this, he sort of knows someone who knows or, you know, and similarly, he's an amazing archivist, isn't he? In terms of, you know, we've got like the original blur kind of hand drawn logo and, yeah. you know, loads of kind of outtakes and things and all the kind of sketches he's kept all of them, you know, it's amazing. It's just, you know, if, I, if anyone came to me and asked me where my stuff was for mm. the logo from like 10 years ago, I'd be like, God knows. <laughs> Rob's got a whole porter cabin of all his old artwork from, you know, when Salary started. Wow, yeah. So, yeah. But that was really handy because we've, we've done four of his <laughs> logos. So, yeah. 
Yeah, amazing. So there's some amazing stories obviously come out of it. So like, which are the ones that stand out to you? Like, obviously you just mentioned there one, but um, which are the kind of like little quirky, personable stories that you found throughout stood out to you most? Well, for me, it was, I mean, it was a real revelation. And he said that he'd never, ever been asked about the logo before. I'd always really loved the Kinks logo. If you're going to ask me what my favourite band logo is, it's probably the Kinks. And I couldn't find anything out about it at all. And I eventually got in touch with the Kinks fan club. Um, and this guy said, um, I'll ask um, Mick Avery, the drummer. Mick Avery got back to us. And it turned out that his dad had designed the very first iteration of the Kinks logo. And he was a guy, he was a set designer, and he did a lot of the sort of classic 60s films. He worked on, he'd come over from Italy. He was an uh, immigrant. And um, he, yeah, he worked on, um, I can't remember, you know, like the, the huge sort of uh, Ealing films that were being made at the time. And he 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 designed the, the the first version of the Kinks logo with the with the little boots on the end, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought that was great. And and Mick Avery was just really touched that somebody had actually asked that question, and he could actually say, "Well, that was my dad." So yeah, um, amazing. Yeah. yeah. It reminds me a little bit of um, what Jim Sutherland did with uh, Start Right. Yes. You know, the right <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> there's your inspiration yeah. jim i love it yeah, exactly. <laughs> um what about you jamie was any it stood out to you um I, I think my favorite logo in the book is actually the ufo one by um yeah, so uh, that we just mentioned a minute ago um yeah just i just love that idea you know the kind of static mm. happening you know because yeah there's been a ufo come down from from uh space kind of thing um, mm -hmm. and I just think, yeah, it's just that logo looks timeless. It's incredible. You know, that's done in like the yeah. early seventies or whatever. And, um, yeah, beautiful thing. Um, in terms of quirky stories, one of the ones that I kind of researched and wrote was wings, the Paul McCartney band. And, uh -huh. um, that sort of came about cause I was reading a really, really nerdy McCartney book. Um, I think it's called legacy or something like that. Big red thing, absolute tome. And there's a little kind of brief passage in there where they talk about uh, the Wings Over Europe tour bus being painted um, and how they got a, a bunch of their kind of like hippie mates to to paint it up in this kind of like kind of psychedelic mural kind of thing going on. Um, and so there were a couple of names in there, Neil Dean and Jeffrey Cleckhorn. And um, so I just thought I'll just have a dig around and I managed to find Neil Dean's website. So he's a kind of graphic artist and illustrator. Mm. Found his website and then um, realized as I sort of dug around that he'd actually passed away a couple of years ago. But I managed to find his widow, um, who kind of didn't reply straight away. But after a couple of weeks or a month, I sort of heard back from her and she said, you know, happy to chat to you and I can put you in touch with Jeffrey, one of the other artists. Um, so, yeah, so I managed to sort of have a chat with, you know, proper like over the phone chat. They didn't have Zoom or any of those kind of things to sort of... Uh, and uh, Jeffrey sort of told me how he got the, the commission and, and he basically, you know, they had, I think they had three days to paint this um, tour bus and, uh, and then they were literally heading off to France and they sort of really didn't have that much of a brief and there wasn't, the, you know, designing a logo for the band wasn't something that they asked for, but basically Neil would study graphic design and I think a couple of days into it, they were staying at a mate's sort of near where they were painting the... Um, the bus in this sort of big warehouse and Neil had this idea and they you know Jeffrey said he was literally just picked up a Mickey Mouse pencil and ruler of the of the um their friend's daughter where they were staying and just sort of you know literally on the sort of back of an envelope kind of thing drew this wings mm -hmm. logo um that was kind of inspired by the matchless motorbikes logo and yeah. um and yeah and then they just like they were like oh that'll make a good logo cool and then they literally like made it out of wood, stuck it on the back of the bus. You know, it wasn't ever part of the, the plan, but that uh -huh. ended up on, you know, record sleeves and on the, the um, middle of the vinyl and labels and stuff. And, you know, all the kind of reissues now all have that logo and it wasn't even meant to be, <laughs> you know, it's kind of amazing. Um, but again, yeah. you know, no one had ever kind of told that story properly. And we also spoke to Neil Dean's um, 
wife who kind of like told us loads of insights and things. It was really, really interesting. It's been sort of fascinating to be able to shed light on some of these stories that, you know, people that have never got the limelight basically, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I love it because like you look through that. I mean, there's some great ones, isn't there? You know, the I think the weirder the better. You know, it, it's mad because like you have like Metallica, for instance. Like that's a fantastic logo. Big shout, Jamie McAfee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and again, that's obviously considered from like a real um, love of someone who's obviously a lover of the band themselves, and then a lover of design yeah. do, doing it kind of like approach with a design system so to say you know what i mean obviously every you know what i mean the assets mm-hmm. are kind of there, you know what i mean to build like but then when you scroll through and you look at like the cramps <laughs> and like things like that, like there's no rules to that do you know what i mean there's no like <laughs> making sure the spacing's perfect and stuff like that yeah yeah, yeah 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 there's something really <laughs> beautiful in them that them non-designer moments you know what i mean that it's like right that, that'll do <laughs> that'll do and then it grows to be like this really iconic mark you know um yeah yeah so it's uh yeah, i think it's, you know, i think it's um i think also like you know i guess i guess part, part of the reason this book is probably resonating is branding has become a thing beyond graphic design mm-hmm. you know particularly in the last 20 years or so um and so logos obviously a massive part of branding and whereas i think in the past maybe the kind of stuff that everyone chatted about was the album covers and the kind of art direction of photography and illustration and that stuff but now now you know there's blogs all about branding and logos and so i think Mm -hmm. the fact that you know we've sort of hit both things with this um but also when you kind of look through the book like you know you look at the chicago stuff and you know that's kind of like branding in the kind of like early noughties you know where you'd take a logo mm. and kind of render it in all different kinds of things you know make a logo out of chocolate make a logo out of wood make a logo out of grass mm. whatever it is they were doing that in the 70s you know they literally they had a branding system they had the logo mark and mm. they just made it in all different creative ways on every different cover they reinvented but the logo sat in the middle and it was made out of whatever it was made out of at the time you know and mm. i think you know there's actually a lot to learn from the kind of way that people handle branding a band, you know, in kind of branding now, which I think is kind of interesting. Mm. Yeah, one thing that I read on one of the pages about the the Beatles logo, um, mm. that they were sort of one of the first bands that put it on the front of the drum, uh, on, on the front of the bass drum, and it was there just mm. live at gigs, right? And then it, it wasn't until later where they were like, oh, actually, this is our, our logo, our signifier. Um, let's start pushing forward with this. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't on a cover of, while the Beatles were actually together. Um, it was only with oh, one wow. of those sort of compilations later. And, um, you know, and then it's sort of become the Beatles logo. It's on merch and T-shirts and everything. But in the, in the lifetime of the band, it wasn't actually used beyond the, the drum mm-hmm. skin, I don't think. So. Yeah, that's true of the Kinks as well. Um, mm-hmm. And some of the others, which escaped me. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not- yeah, which is interesting because then you look at like the Yardbirds, same era, you know, they had it as mm-hmm. a drum skin thing, but it was on all their covers, similarly with like Love or, you know, it's kind of interesting. But uh, but yeah, the Beatles one, you know, that was just drawn as part of, you know, you'd go, you'd go to the drum shop and buy a kit and they'd say, what's your band name? And someone out the back would kind of do a sign writing onto the bass drum. And, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's just kind of, that's it, you know. Yeah, the guy, the guy who painted it got a fiver. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and there were, I think there were seven different versions of that because Ringo got through seven Amazing. different bass drums. Well, and the first one I think is Paul McCartney's got, but uh, yeah, you become quite nerdy about this after a while. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I yeah, love yeah, it. Yeah. Listen, yeah. the more nerdy, the oh, better. Yeah. Have you um, have you done many band logos yourselves, like band projects or anything like that? Obviously, have you done your own personal ones and stuff? Personally, yeah. I, you know, like I said earlier, kind of, you know, I've been in various bands through the years, and kind of, particularly through my sort of teens and twenties. You know, sort of did all the covers and stuff that we that we did. Ah, so yeah, done stuff through that, and then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh man, it's quite hard to please like a band of you know, one of our bands there's six or seven of us trying to get seven people on, on board with a band logo or a cover is a nightmare. Um and then I've sort of 
you know, I still hang out with a lot of musicians and stuff. So, you know, I'm always doing stuff for mates, a little bit cheap. I did a logo for my mate, um, Luke, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, he's just released stuff as Luke of Ulysses and uh, I did his logo for 50 quid. <laughs> so, nice. you know, it's not, it's not big money. <laughs> but, um, oh, but yeah, you, keep like him, yeah. you know, I've done jazz album covers and indie stuff and, you know, all for sort yeah. of like small or you know, stuff on indie labels and small labels, but yeah, it's always fun. Yeah. And do you approach it like a graphic designer? I was just or... going to say that. I was just, that was the, literally took the words out of my mouth. Just because <laughs> on the blog, on, on one of the blogs that we read, you, you mentioned that, you know, a lot of these stories um, of how the logo comes about, it's not necessarily from yeah. a graphic designer. Like you said, it's from a friend. Mm. It can be from a roadie. It can be from somebody in the band, yeah. somebody selling the t-shirts. Like, how do you, yeah, how, how do you approach a band logo being a graphic designer? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, obviously, quite often um, musicians have got quite a good, you know, visual idea of what how they want to represent their their band. So, like the Luke of the Luke of Ulysses thing, he was like, "I love the Cars logo," um, the uh, Gary Newman band. So I kind of, you know, he wanted it to feel quite eighties. You know, it's quite a sort of eighties power pop kind of record that he's put out. Um, so I kind of had that as the starting point. Um, and then I just created this kind of L, LU kind of uh, monogrammy thing for him. Um, so yeah, like it, it depends. And then I, you know, I did a, a jazz album for a guy that gave me a double bass lesson that lives in Bristol, and um, his album was called Things Fell Apart. And I just and he recorded it in New York, and um, I just got this uh, Milton Glaser typeface because obviously he's a new york designer um and it's a mm. sense of typeface and i and uh rick banks at face 37 had just kind of digitized it for the first time in different ways and so i bought that and i just kind of made the typography fall apart as you kind of went through the cd uh. cover so like on the cover it was kind of pretty much intact and then as you went through and just kind of you know it's less a logo as a kind of sort of more of a little typographic system for the for the album and stuff um, so I, I always try and like have an idea, but also I probably spend a, a lot more time when it's when it's a musician, like on how it looks, you know, yeah. almost style over the idea. Whereas when I'm working on a kind of graphic design kind of project, I'll kind of go in harder with the ideas. I think um, it's probably just you know, and it's more just because of the audience, I guess, and because of what you know, the musicians want and stuff. But yeah nice i think that's really nice though, as a designer to have their moments in it with like a project and try and take a bit of a looser approach with it when it is a project like that instead of being so confined you know what i mean to like not yeah, corporate yeah. kind of such you know what i mean but like there's certain takes you've got you know what i mean um yeah for sure yeah definitely yeah a bit of trying to think yeah if i if i mean if i was to do like ephemera or like a curation project i don't know what i'd do it over do you know what i mean like <laughs> like what would be your goal to michael if you because you've always been into bands and that growing up but more hardcore aren't you oh, i've been into all sorts but i did used to be in a like punk hardcore band yeah uh, <laughs> <and> I, <laughs> what it was called you, uh, well what did what did you play oh i started off playing guitar and then i became the vocalist did you um, you're like yeah, a, screaming. Yeah. You got some sort of scream on you, have you? But yeah, my mum used to call it screamy, shouty music. <laughs> yeah. um, but we, the band, I don't even know where the name came from, but it was called Strike Out. And then the sort of LP mm. cover was, it, it took this sort of American baseball-esque of these sort of like cartoony characters. Um, but the mm. logo was just based from that sort of, I don't even know what you'd call it, like academy sort of style of... Um, yeah, I know what you mean. It says strike how it's got line underneath yeah, it. You know, it feels yeah, very sort of American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I don't know if that's just influenced by, you know, you, you sort of get sucked into that world, don't you? A lot of the bands that we were listening to at the time were all from America. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's really cool, though. So now that it's all been back, what's the, what's the next steps now? What's uh, how, do, how do we get one in our hands? And how does everyone else get one in their hands if they've not, say, put in for the funding and stuff like that? Like, what is the... What's the next step? Yeah, so the funding's still open. Um, mm. So I think we've got 16 or 17 days left. Um, mm. But obviously, because we're we're doing this with Circa Press, the plan was always that 
you know, we'd overprint. So we'd obviously there's a certain amount of backers which mm-hmm. we will obviously fulfil, but we'll overprint. So you know, I think originally if we'd hit our fifteen thousand mark, then we were um, going to print fifteen hundred books because that would give us enough money to do that, and then Circa Press would distribute those to bookshops and and Amazon yeah, nice. and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Obviously, now we've kind of gone over and above that. We're sort of just actually chatting about it just before the call about how we're going to sort of stretch the, you know, production value and stuff. So put maybe a bit more kind of foiling on the cover, maybe some ribbons, yeah, that kind of nice. thing. Yeah. Just kind of go, go yeah. a bit more kind of. <laughs> yeah. 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 Any ideas, guys? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not yeah, convinced so about ribbons. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Um, yeah, so if you don't get to back it on Kickstarter, it will be available um, probably from probably September, realistically, um, yeah. through Circa Press. So you'll be able to get it in local bookshops and stuff like Circa Press. Like the tap book you can buy in Bath here um, down at a local bookshop. So, yeah, hopefully it will kind of get get further around the world. One of the things that's been difficult with the Kickstarter, we could only make it available in the UK and the US just because Brexit means that shipping a single book to Europe is like 25 quid plus you've got to pay some VAT mm-hmm. on top. It's just prohibitive. So, you know, it will be available um, in Europe and hopefully further afield. We've had quite a few messages from Australian designers that want to get hold of it. Um, so, yeah, so mm-hmm. it will be out there um, shipped over hopefully for August time and uh, and then, yeah, starting to get distributed. So, yeah. Yes. Kind of mad. Kind of doesn't quite feel real yet. I can't wait to like get a book in my hand and just like, you know, yeah, that's when it, the moment it will really sink in. I think. Yeah, I yeah, bet. Nice. nice. Are you are you gonna do anything special for like the release date or anything like a? a, a you might put in words for you, but like an exhibition or anything like that, or to kind of open it up. I haven't really spoken about that. I mean, there's going to be a launch party at the. Um, yeah, yeah. This is uh, private club. <laughs> <laughs> but you can imagine some of them logos printed massively beautifully, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. A little exhibition space yeah. with, and just with a Bible yeah, in the centre. Yeah. And you walk it's in. It's got to be a gig. It's got to be a gig. It's got to be a gig. Someone, yeah. listen, yeah. pull it out of one of them contacts yeah. that you've got there. <laughs> yeah, put a super group yeah, together. It was like, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we definitely, we definitely want to do some events and some kind of book signings and things. And um, we did sort of vaguely talk about doing it in, in kind of music venues and stuff like that but um yeah but yeah to be honest like there's so much work going into sort of getting the book almost done before the kickstarter and and then you know all the kind of push we've done with the kickstarter yeah. and making the video and all that sort of stuff we just haven't our feet haven't touched the ground since since we got the funding yeah. you know we haven't really properly thought up i think when that when the dust settles uh once we've kind of done finish the kickstarter then we'll start to plan out those next things but um but yeah it's exciting that you know that we've got the money and we're going to be doing this stuff so um yeah it's kind of rad there's quite a lot yeah of massive boring. congratulations there's quite a lot Sorry. of boring stuff that people don't realize as well which is a big shout yeah. out to my wife she's been doing all the credits which is just <laughs> like there are pages and pages and pages and pages of them they just go on and on yeah and on. We don't yeah. want to upset you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we want everyone to get their get their dues. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of like, yeah, tweaks and you know editing and you know, and it's still got to go off to the to the proofreader in the next week or two, and then you know there'll be another round of, of stuff. But it's kind of everything's in place. You know, the 444 yeah. pages I think we're on now. So yeah, yeah, it's wow. all it's all there. Got flow in those credits and then uh yeah and then it goes up to the proofreader so yeah kind of mad you might awesome. have to ship it cheaper if you made less pages <laughs> yeah i know i know well, it was going to be 400 pages and then when when uh when i took that month off we kind of realized that we had more content than pages so it just kind of kept creeping up and up and up but um so yeah, we had to put you keep a... thinking of other logos, you keep thinking, Oh shit, we could have had them. <laughs> you know, we should have done this. So yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah. That's a good point. Did any not make it? Did any not make the cut? Um occasionally you just couldn't find anything out or it wasn't yeah. an interesting mm. story or mm. yeah. Mm. Like, uh, Queens of Stone Age we wanted to put in there, you know, the yeah. kind of classic mm. uh sperm going into the queue kind of thing. 
And uh, yeah. I did a bit of research, found that it was designed by one of their kind of sound guys, um, one of their users and stuff. But I, I sort of found his website and tried to get in touch with him. There's no nothing but an email. You know, tried a few times. They don't get back to you. It's kind of, you know, but it'd be interesting though. You know, now that we've got a book behind us, you know, if we ever did want to do volume two, Jim, I think, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could, you know, maybe people would be a a bit more responsive now that they've seen we've sort of pulled it off um but yeah there's yeah. definitely some classics we didn't didn't fit in and you know we wanted to wanted to sort of concentrate on the ones where particularly where we could get a good story you know and, and an untold yeah. story and kind of you know get some new insights into it you know there's obviously stuff like i don't know, like the queen logo has obviously been written about a lot you know you uh -huh. can kind of find lots of stuff about that so you know we kind of wanted to go a bit more off the beaten track where we could and but yeah, we've had loads of people emailing us, or messaging us on socials, kind of asking if such and such a logo is like some dude messaged me yesterday saying it's the Madness logo and then it's like, it's not, sorry, you know, but it's like, you just can't fit it all in, particularly yeah, you know, yeah. these stories kind of run to like 12 we? pages. Yeah. We considered yeah. Madness, we just couldn't find anything out. I think it might have been Barney no. Bubbles, but I'm not 100%. Yeah. No, no. What's nice though oh, yeah. is that you've got this music empire now. Is you can then do spin-offs. You could do a hardcore book for me. You could do. A <laughs> I was just going to say, yeah. you. you know, we, you, could, you, you could do. I don't know. You could go off, couldn't you? Um, oh, yeah. You know, it's amazing. A world that you've yeah. built now, like you said. We, you know, you could do a gig at the end. There's like so many different avenues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's, yeah. It's really exciting. Well, we've been the yeah, guys yeah. to um, contribute to uh, <laughs> a, a, a funkadelic book. Um, <laughs> yes. Through we we met these two Dutch guys, these twins, they're complete sort of um, funk and soul maniacs. They're collectors. And, um, you know, they're very tight with Sly, Sly Stone and uh, George Clinton. And they've given us so much great material, haven't they? And been so helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah they, they sent they, us all these parliament scans and I was like, oh, there's enough here for another book. And they literally <laughs> wrote back in about 30 seconds saying, hey, dude, let's make another book. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it looks like we might be doing that. So, yeah, quite a nice. That's cool. You could do a you could do a double page spread in the middle of LSD tabs. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. got, we've got, we have got one LSD tab um, featured, haven't we? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, there. we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't work. Sadly, you can't lick the page. Maybe that's one of the extras <laughs> that we get printed into the book. Yeah. <laughs> now that we've overfunded, Boston. <laughs> yeah, I think the other thing we probably didn't really mention that's been great about this book is just getting our friends to sort of write pieces as well. You know, not everything's been written by us. You know, and um, although Jim's written the kind of lion's share of everything in the book, but you know, we've kind of had mates kind of just cho choose their favourite logo, like Craig Ward and. Um, chose pulp and wrote a really lovely piece about pulp and found the original designer and interviewed him and um, yeah That's my mate cool. neil hedger wrote a really nice piece about the white stripes and yeah it's kind of nice that there's other voices in there i think that's again what's kind of given it more legs and just us yeah and, going on, so. and also kind of increased the reach of it you know so yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's, it's partly strategic as well so. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, it's great for me as well. Like, I, I've never really been a massive, massive band follower growing up and stuff. My family was never into it either, do you know what I mean, that much. My dad just listened to Rod Stewart and that's it. Um, it wasn't like he listened to, you <laughs> know what I mean, like a load of, you know, <laughs> you gotta love Rod. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't like I was, you know what I mean, so like me looking through these, there's loads that I, obviously I know the iconic ones, right, but there's loads in there that I don't know. So it's a great kind of like nice bit of visual ephemera for someone like myself yeah, and even yeah. younger people from me, do you know what I mean, to keep these marks alive. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, yeah, no, yeah, I think cool. fantastic. Well, yeah, massive no. congrats, guys. Thank you. Sorry, Jim. Thank you. Sorry, Jim. No, I was just going to say, it's absolutely true. I mean, um, all the 60s guys who designed a lot of the logos have sort of either passed away or really old now. So it is yeah. kind of keeping these things alive and, and kind of mm. uh, giving credit you know, while you can still get those stories. So, I mean, just yeah. to be serious for a moment, it is a kind of historical piece in a way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's really true. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it's nice to have a staple in it. Well, I look forward to hopefully getting my hands on one at some point, shipping yeah, to New cool. York. <laughs> <laughs> Gold you know foil. I mean? <laughs> Gold <laughs> foil, then bossings, etchings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <we're> gonna have <laughs> <laughs> you know oh, <laughs> singing and dancing everything um but all right that's great i mean we've kept you for an hour and i'm kind of like conscious that i don't want to take too much of your sunday afternoon up um but have you got any more bits you want to add michael no i think that's all good again like i don't, I don't want to keep you guys around. too long no I, th- I think unless you guys feel that there's something more that you want to tell us um obviously like you said before getting your friends involved i think you know that's that's yeah. something which is like such a wicked thing to do and like i look forward to reading those those spreads and the little quirky bits thank you thank you yeah 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 we could nerd out all day but we won't yeah i'm <laughs> sure yeah, we'll yeah. give away too much oh. we'll end up telling you everything in the book <laughs> and jim as well I'm... like go on sorry no you got that go go i'm gonna say it's nice to have both of you on here do you know what i mean um the designer and the writer and obviously mm-hmm. we could go into both of your backgrounds individually as well and kind of run out and we're trying to put a cap on that too and not delve into supple you know and delve into your history gym of all you know what i mean all the publications and stuff like that so it'd be great to have you both on at some point mm-hmm. again maybe in the future to actually spot yeah cool. about yeah, your own yeah, endeavors yeah. you know yeah. um but yeah the reason we set out for doing this podcast is to get people on like yourselves who are doing obviously you know what i mean the design agency stuff and stuff and uh, 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 you know what I mean? The the bigger things, but also these personable projects that I think keep us all alive um, inside as designers and it, and it sets that light inside, you know. Um, I think it's really nice to see and hopefully it inspires people to keep pushing their personal projects regardless if it takes seven years and you get some pushbacks and you get some turns, you know what I mean? People telling you that you can't yeah. do X, Y and Z, keep pushing yeah. through and it must, it, must, yeah. it must feel great. Yeah. If nothing so, else, we've been dogged <laughs> yes. yeah i don't know what i'm gonna do now so this is all gone i know i know, <laughs> I know it's when you look back <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess when you it's look back a... no, it's when, when you realize you love them late nights when you was on the hunt for it all and stuff when it's done you know yeah just to piggyback what, yeah. what christian was saying then we um yeah, as, as soon as we saw about the book that it was coming out and saw the Kickstarter, we just messaged each other straight away. And it was just because yeah. we, could, we could feel the passion. The, the, right. You know, it's oh, two guys. Nice. Yeah, no, of course. Like, you know, it's two guys that, that have been in, in the creative fields for a while. And, you know, to obviously have that passion to sit down and bring a love for music and a, a love for, for design and writing together mm. is um, magical. Because I guess me and Christian are always looking for, like, what's what's the thing that we can throw our passion into using all of his of design and you know many other things yeah. so it's just so beautiful to see something come together um so yeah no thank you both for coming on like like we said no we worries, don't want to no take worries. up too much more of your Thanks time for we know it's a sunday um so yeah thank you so much cheers no guys yeah, i've got to go to tesco's before they shut <laughs> I miss, I, listen, I miss a test i miss a tesco big shot me <laughs> i'm telling you the simple things listen embrace that going to tesco can be a real vibe <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah just put the right album yeah on, um you know, be great. <laughs> right, that's the one See you all thank you very much yeah. guys thank, thank you so you. much bye. Thank, thank you, you very bye bye that was awesome Lad, that was sick. Really cool. That really, was so that good. Was we need to do a project. I was trying to think, like, what? Yeah, I didn't Man, want to start like running. I'm all the way through it. I was like, like, wow. like, I was like, I was I'm like, sat on this <laughs> podcast. It's not, it's not one that I'm watching. I'm, um, I'm trying to think of like a creation project because you see some. Um, I didn't want to start running my mouth on it, but you see, and make it sound like whatever. But like, you see stamps and like people who create, like even coins or whatever it is. You know, I mean, just visual ephemera from history that is still captured today and i think obviously with the with where you you know i mean with the way we keep progressing so to say not that that's just forgotten about but it's very just pinterest in it you know i mean you look on pinterest and you see what's done today everything that's fresh today and i think the nice thing about opening them books up and being able to dive back into these beautiful things even if it's like postcards or whatever do you know i mean shoelaces or just just some visual kind of like curation Sick. Just what we were talking about then, to be honest, let me just pull my screen up. Just to keep it topical, I mean, you just mentioned about stamps then, but literally you could look at LSD stamps. 
Like yeah, the yeah. They go into there could be a whole book about yeah. this. I'm sure there is. There is. There's loads of stuff. I mean, not not just staying on drugs, but there's been stuff on pills and things like that. Do you know what I mean? Gary's and that from raves and stuff in the nineties. Even that, like rave posters. Do you know what I mean? From like the nineties again. What I've forgotten about, although that like, has the end of stuff from Manchester and things like that. All the classic Peter Savile things and um, Peter Savile would have been a good thing to speak to him about because obviously he's does he's done a lot of like kind of like music bits and stuff in here. Very kind of. Obviously, a very English Mancunian designer, right? He is in man, yeah, money yeah. in it. Peter Savile, big man, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we could have just gone on forever. That's why I just, I, I know you were trying to cap it as well. We've obviously we had them for about an hour. Um, I know where we always say again, full disclosure. We always say to these people, we're going to take it for half an hour and then run over. Do you know what I mean? So I'm looking at the time, me and it's like on them ones. Sometimes I find myself like I want to, I want to ask loads, but then sometimes I think it's good to just sit back and let them tell us. Do you know what I mean? And that was definitely one of them podcasts where, like, I just want to be in the drive. I just want to be in the back seat, let them two drive, and I just want to listen to to hear where they've got to, where they've got to, you know, and not kind of kerfuffle things up or like mispronunciate stuff like I did at the start of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I thought that this one is is just sitting back, like you said, and and letting them sort of steal the show. But there's this like little voice in my head is like, do I need to chip in now? Do I like I need to try and? Steal yeah, it's this a funny right one, isn't it? But, yeah, yeah. I think it was. I think it was kind of nice and organic, and it was really nice to meet Jim. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, thank you to Jamie and Jim. Uh, thank you to everyone listening. If you are still listening, hopefully you are. Please like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. We're going to be trying be as, as regular, more regular as possible. Um, one a month at least, two a month if if we can. Obviously, Michael's in the UK now. I'm in the US, so we're fighting with time a little bit. But but yeah, thank you to them and. I look forward to grabbing one of these books, bro. Um, see if the studio will order one for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, nice one, guys. Have a lovely day, and we will fucking speak to you soon. Cross that bit out, Michael. Don't let me swear. <laughs>